the songs today are all about us going to our eternal home. Amen. That, that day that we're looking forward to is going to be the best time of our life. We get to be in front of our King and our Savior and our Lord and uh, see all those amazing things that God has in store for us.
Amen. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Amen. 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 Good be today, just like the song says. Boy, thank you guys so much. I know it, it is hard work to do all that and all the time practicing and everything else. And, and some of y'all know when I got a new soundboard, I got a new sound woman. Right there, right? It was a package deal. Right? And uh, she is doing a fantastic, she's never ran sound before. I think she's doing a fantastic job because it, it is not easy. Yeah. And, uh, I want to thank Tom too. Tom came over last night and helped us go through all the chords and, and try to, not these chords, but guitar chords, and try to get everything lined out and get what we needed and what we didn't need and, and everything else. And But thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I know a different king. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. <clears throat> Woo. that song about twice as, as it should be. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, so uh, introductions. I think everybody here has been here before. Right? Most all of you have been here at Park Place Church before. You've been here before. Yeah. No? It's your first time? Okay. Anybody else first time at Park Place Church? No? Sheila, put your hand down. <laughs> no, it. Uh, so this is our uh, fourth season, fourth season with Park Place and Fig Tree. Fourth season being full time. They said when God called us to go, He didn't tell us to leave. Apparently, so we stayed put. And uh, many of you I know come to uh, come to Fig Tree because they shut down services here at the end, at after Easter. So many of you come to Victory and join us because we have combined services over there. So that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But uh, so those of y'all not know, don't know, Brandon Freeland. You can call me Pastor. I don't particularly care for Reverend because there's only one we revere. But you can call me Pastor. Just don't call me late for dinner. All right? Okay. Uh, my wife, <coughs> Sheila, and my son. <coughs> Uh, we, we all three live at Fig Tree, and we, we get to come here. Quiet, quiet. Sometimes quiet, quiet. But, but, uh, but we, we get to come here. This is one of the many things, by the grace of God, we get to do. And it just blows me away what we get to do. Me and my wife have been married. There she is, sweetheart. Yeah. We've been married uh, 24 years. We just had we we are we are born on the same day, not the same hour. I'm six hours older, and I love it for sure. But uh, we're born on the same day, and we're not related, which is pretty great, right? <laughs> but uh, pretty awesome. So we just had we're almost the big five zero. I feel like the big eight zero, but <laughs> but uh, so so that's that's my wife. Uh, we uh, belong to a group. The group that brought us down is uh, Christian Resort Ministries. We have uh, pastors all throughout the valley. Uh, Dave and Ruth Ann were part of that group. And uh, or I guess kind of still are part of the group, right? Yeah. yeah. Still on their list. That's right. That's right. It's like the mob. You can't get out. <laughs> so... Uh, so we're, we're part of the group of pastors that, that are all throughout the valley. And... Uh, I don't know how we had, how many new ones this year? Seven. Seven new couples. Seven new pastors. 
and uh, not all new parks, a couple new parks, because people the retire and pastors step down and others come in, and you know it's kind of how I got here. But uh, and we also have many in in uh, Arizona. Where else? Help me out here. And the ones going to Florida next year, yeah. right? We're trying to get into Florida. It's it's not as it's, and not as cheap to live in Florida for a winter. You're not winter Texas as a snowbird as it is to live as a winter Texan. So it's hard to get people, pastors that can afford to go over to Florida. So that's that's been a problem. Uh, some of you know we uh, well, last year, last January, we took over Sunshine Ministries from Keith and Linda, Linda Axton, and that has been. A awesome joy, and one of the one of the greatest things with that, because we, we going into it, we were concerned how are we going to do everything, and it's been amazing to see how the churches and the people have come alongside us, and and we couldn't do it without them. It is it's like they all the puzzle just fell together, and we get to and everybody's taking part. It's just mind blowing. Mind blowing. These these two right here are a big pet, the Sunshine Ministries. But it, it is just mind blowing what we get to do. We uh, we've uh, Sunshine Ministries has built over 200 houses in Mexico. We have uh, 11 pastors that we work with. We just finished. Uh, well, we we built a church in uh, La Playa Baghdad. Which is all, all south of South Padre, following down and you know, hit fly back that very poor fishing community. We built built a church there three years ago, and the church has grown so much that they didn't have they didn't have room for everybody. So we almost doubled the size of the church. So Friday we went down and they had the three year anniversary and and the grand reopening after doubling the size of the church. How awesome is that? I'd like to see double the amount of chairs in here, you know, for people coming to church with it. But uh, they're doing an amazing thing there. We just started uh, a couple months ago, started a, a big feeding program there. And we have, uh, how many breeding, feeding programs? I forget. Eight? Eight feeding programs? Weekly, weekly feed, feeding programs where we feed mostly children. We have one that's just for the elderly. And then the um, rest of them are mostly for children. We have uh, we give away over 600 pounds of food, beans, rice, and the sink in every month. Just mind blowing, mind blowing. And a lot of you guys help when we when we bag up all that food. Some of you guys come over and, and help it. And I'm hoping to be able to do a food packing party over here sometime, so everybody can take part in that because it is it, it's a blast. We have a great a great time. But, but all those, you think every grain of rice goes over to somebody that would do without if we didn't do this. You know, so that's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but you know, I'm very thankful for those that support Sunshine Ministries. It's not us. We all, we, I call ourselves God's funnel. People, people donate and support families, and we're the funnel that makes sure it's pointed in the right direction. Because, you know, there are some ministries out there that it doesn't go in the right direction and it goes into people's pockets. And uh, Sunshine Ministries, as long as we can, we don't take a penny for ourselves, for Sunshine Ministries. It all comes in and goes right back out to those that are in need. You know, and there may come a day that we have to, you know, they have to, for whatever reason, but that day is not today, praise the Lord, amen? Now we do, we do have some that support us through Sunshine Ministries. Directly, and, and that's fine and dandy. If you wanted to do that, that's that's great. We would much appreciate it. But uh, but we are very blessed to get to do what we do, and uh, and we we live off the support we get from both churches. And so that's that's how we get by. And uh, God has always been. We the first year we were thinking, uh, you know, what are we going to do when the offerings stop? Or they go down to five dollars in the offering plate, and what are we going to do? And there was that second of wringing our hands and saying, "Lord, what are we going to do?" But then, oh, oh wait, wait, wait a second! God is always taking care of us, and He always will. Right? So we are very, very, very thankful to God. First of all, 
for being our supply and, our, and supplying our every need, and then for everybody that gives in the ministry and supports us. Very thankful. So, if you have your Bibles, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, it would help if I got there myself, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> I was trying to find a clip from a video. How many of y'all know who Mark Lowry is? Funny man, yeah, you know who that is. I was trying to find a clip where, where he was, he's was addressing all the different denominations that were in one of the concerts. And he come up with a name, and I could not find that clip, right? Because as for, as for us in uh, CRM, which we're, which we're supported through, uh, we are non-denominational. If, if you're expecting a Lutheran service, you'll be disappointed. If you're expecting a Baptist service, you'll be disappointed. Or whatever whatever version that you want, it's, that's not what we are. We, we try to cater to the little things that, that make it comfortable for people, but we're not any of those things. And, and I didn't find what he said, but I, I come up with a little bit myself. It's Baptist... Pena Lutha Meta Nazi Costalist. I'll read it again. Baptist Pena Lutha Meta Nazi Costalist. That's what we are. Something like that. You know. But but I, I firmly believe when we when we go to meet our maker, all those labels that we put on ourselves are gonna burn off. Amen. You know, we don't need those labels. It, the one label, that's right. One label. Do you belong to him? Then you're then you're in Christ. You've been saved, set free, born again, but you're his. You don't, then you don't need all those other labels. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Says the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Let me back up and punt a little bit there. The, the church divided is defeated. Right? I, I, I had this, this dream one time, and then and it's, it's, it was a troubling dream. I mean, I woke up in tears because it just really troubled me. And, and long story short, I, I, I busted the door open into, a, into a, an operating room. And Jesus is laying out on the table. And they have like bone saws and scalpels. And they're, and they're cutting on him. And one's cutting his hand off, and one's cutting his arm off, and and, and whether it be God or my conscience, whatever, he turns to me, faces me, and, and says, don't let them dismember my body. So it's kind of been a goal of mine to not let them dismember the Lord's body. Here, here in, the, in this scripture, it talks about this is the body of Christ. We're all the body of Christ, right? If we have a label, that would be the label. Christian, followers of Jesus, disciples of Christ. Those things that divide us shouldn't, right? Now, there is, there is sound biblical doctrine, and, I, and when, I'm, when I'm teaching pastors, and we did this weekend, we, I, I use the example of a, of a dartboard, right? And and how many of y'all have seen a dartboard where you got a wall behind the dartboard and it's full of holes for people missing it, right? That's how I play darts. I'm not real good at it, right? So, so if you if you favor your wall and you want me to play darts with it, it'd be a bad thing because I'd probably miss the dartboard. <laughs> so, so off the dartboard, off the dartboard on the wall, that's unbiblical. Okay, that, that, those are people. They don't know Christ. What they believe doesn't line up with God's word. And it could, you can put a lot of cults in that category. You know, 
And you, all those people that don't have sound doctrine, I mean, all, way off the board, you would have your Muslims. You know, you would have all uh, the Hindus and and Buddhists, and you know, those those are way off the dark board. And there, there's some that are a little closer to the dark board that they even may mention the name Jesus, but it's not the same Jesus, right? There's some that say, they say they say Jesus, but their Jesus, Lucifer, is his brother. That's not on the dark board, right? They believe in a different Jesus. So, so that's that's all those people that are contrary to God and His Word. And then you have the dark board, right? Perfect sound doctrine is the bullseye, right? That's what we all should be aiming for: is the bullseye. I don't know anybody that's hit the bullseye yet. I would say, but because I am always learning. And I'm always growing in Christ that I'm aiming to the bullseye. I'm not left, left side of the bullseye whenever nobody grabs a dartboard aiming for the bullseye and goes like this, you know, and throw it sideways. We should always be aiming for the bullseye, which is sound doctrine in Christ Jesus, what the Bible tells us, and that's where we where we get that from, right? That's our, our aim. Now, are we there yet? No. Man, I really don't know anybody that's there yet. And I don't know any denominations that are there either. Okay? <laughs> just just saying. Because somebody can be 90% 90, 90 right and be off on one thing and almost get off the board. So, but that's our aim and that's our goal. Okay? All the rest of us are somewhere else on the board. If you believe in the biblical Jesus Christ, you're somewhere on the board. We fellowship with one another. We are all, if you're on the board, you're part of the body of Christ, right? We are brothers and sisters. We have something that we can really talk about and we can get along about. It's, it's our Jesus and God's word. It should be the thing that gets us the most excited. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who died for us. Amen. Amen. So, so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. So you have an understanding. We're not all on the same page, but we should all be on a dark board. Okay. And what what is great about being in the body of Christ is, is as we're as we're all aiming for the center, we're all changing and we're all growing together. Amen. Right. You know what? I've been wrong. Okay? And, and, and let me tell you, let me tell you, if there's something that you don't agree with that I'm preaching, please come to me. Please come to me. Because I have been wrong. Okay? Amen. <laughs> right? This is how we grow together. Aiming for the center of the dark world. Right? And, and we should do the same with each other. And that, that's why our Bible studies are important. That's why fellowship is important. Because we are all struggling to aim for the center of the dark world. Amen? We're all part of the body of Christ. And that, and that verse 12 it says, And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, what spirit is that? It's not an evil spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. What and what does the Holy Spirit do? He causes us to be holy. Right? That, that's that's one of the greatest things the Holy Spirit does is convicts you where you are wrong and guides you to the center of the dark world. Guides you into the light of Christ. And then that's what the Holy Spirit does. And then one of my favorite scriptures, Matthew 24, 45, you know, when Christ breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit, and he said, and then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. One of the, one of the other things the Holy Spirit does, not just, not just guide you and direct you and correct you, but it, but it brings life to God's word. Amen? 
So, so verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So the body is not one member, but many. And Christ is the cornerstone. He's the foundation. If, if your doctrines and belief doesn't start and end with Christ, then we need to back off because you're off the dark board. Come back to Christ being your center and what you stand on. There's a lot of man-made doctrines out there, and a lot of them are built upon the name of the person. You know? Verse 15. Verse 15. If the foot shall say, now how does a foot talk? I don't know. A foot's, a foot's got a mouth here. Hope he doesn't breathe. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Right. So whether you like it or not, you're part of the body of Christ. You say, well, I'm not, but, but I'm not, I'm not pastor so-and-so, I'm not deacon so-and-so, or I'm not whatever. It doesn't matter. Do labels matter to God? No. Are you his? That's what matters. Just because you're not so and so it don't matter. In verse 16, and if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not the body. Is it not the body? Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? What good would it be? We couldn't hear nothing if everybody was an eye. If the whole were a hearing, where were the smelling? If everybody was, a, was an ear, how could we smell? Verse 18, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Because what is, what's it all about? Is it about making you happy or making him happy? Is it about pleasing you and our emotions or is it about pleasing the one who created us? Amen? It's all about him. It's all about him. All right. I really would like to make a banner out like we had in the old church. It's all about him. And that's not H-Y-M-N. That's him. Him, the Lord. Okay, so as it had pleased him, verse 19, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head and the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. We shouldn't say to anybody in the body of Christ, there's no room for you. There's no purpose for you. Well, I'm a hand and you're a foot, and I don't need you, foot. Dismembering the Lord's body. We all have a purpose and we all have a plan. God's designed us to do something, whether we like it or not. Something. I don't know what your something is. Some people's something is very obvious. That it's their something. You know, it goes on in this chapter. It talks about there's uh, apostles, preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets. You know, that, that, they're part of the body too. And what's their purpose? For the perfecting of the body. To get the body to aim for the bullseye. That's their purpose. In, in, in another book, it talks about those that do helps. In, in another book, it talks about if you have decisions to be made in the church, let those that are least among you make the decisions. How about the, the guy that makes soilets? That's the one who makes decisions in the church. Because, it, for the, because those with titles seem more often than not seem to make it, seem to make it about them and you know, not, not about him. So it says get the least in the church to make the decisions. That's great. So we're all one body. We shouldn't say to anybody in the, anybody, any part of the body that they're not necessary, because they are. And then he says, then it says, verse 22, name much more. Those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Now we, we have some that are seem to be more feeble. I, I've seen some feeble. Women, especially, that are powerhouses for God. 
They pray like nobody I've ever known before. They, boy, they just connect with God and let it rip. I, I know people that seem to be feeble, but yet they, they have a ministry of writing get well cards and God bless you cards and, and doing little things like how many how many people make quilts and blankets? We we gave away so many quilts and blankets this year, it just blows my mind. And and those uh, homeless mats and all these other stuff. So just because you think you're feeble, you're mighty in Christ Jesus. Amen. Just because you may be aged a little bit more than other about other people doesn't mean you can't do something for God. Making doll dresses. I know some people do that. Make doll dresses. So verse 23, and those members of the body in which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Uh, our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Right, that, that, you know, Jesus has said, they described Jesus in, in Isaiah, they said he was not comely as he, as he should be desired because he was beautiful. He looked normal. And that's where that, that word comeliness there. Just because that, that whatever that person is doing that's in the body of Christ doesn't please you, or does, you don't like what they do, they should get even more honor. Because maybe that person scrubs toilets for the glory of God. Maybe that person wraps up cords for the glory of God. Maybe you, we don't know. But we should get, it says we can, should give more honor and glory to those less pretty jobs. Verse 24, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. And we can all look at our bodies and think, hey, there's some, there's some uncomely parts. There's some not so pretty parts. You know, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror in the morning, I'm saying, and it ain't pretty, right? And in that saying that, there's there's parts of the body of Christ, you know, some of them get down in, and do the things which, boy, nobody else would do that. That's not a pretty thing. That's not easy to do, right? But some people, that's what they're called to do. And we should give glory to those things. Verse 25 says that there be no schism in the body, that the members should have the same care for one another. And how many times in Scripture does it say God is not a respecter of persons? He doesn't esteem one higher than the other. Everybody's on an even keel before God. You're either his or you're not. That's that's a standard. Did I just die? Not literally. The battery's in the wall. You're dead. I'll just have to talk louder. Is that all right? So, uh, so verse 25 says that there should be no schism in the body, that the members should have the same care for one another. Same care for one another. It doesn't say unless they have a title or unless they dress right or unless they go to the right church or unless just fill in the blank, whatever it is. There's no but. There's no except. It says we should have the same care for one another, that there be no division. Don't let God's body be divided just because somebody has a label that you don't like. That's what it's all about. We should have the same care for one another. And then, and then here's, where it's, here's where it gets really good. Verse 26. 
It says, whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member is honored, lift it up. All the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. This is almost a declaration for Paul telling them who they are as if they don't know. Because he ends with that declaration, now you're in the body of Christ. Now you got the rules. Now you know who you are and what you what is expected of you. I sing really loud now. Now you know the rules and what's expected of you, and you know how to perform and how to act and how to treat each other. Now you're part of the body. It's a bold declaration. But that verse 26, we, we saw that recently. I, I, I know we've seen that many times. I've seen it many times with Park Place Church throughout the last four years we've been here. Whenever Keith was going through his last few weeks there. We saw members of the body, members of the church rally to help Mary because she was suffering and he was suffering. And we saw the members of the body do exactly what the members of the body are supposed to do. Come alongside her, lift her up, cry with her, Help her bring her food. And that's not stopped. From what I'm told. That people are still rallying. And helping her go through it. And, and many of you know what that's like. Many of you know it is what it's like to go through. To lose a loved one. And many. Many. That we know down here. Have lost sons and daughters. Mothers, fathers. Many different ones. Uh, we've had personal loss. We've been sickness and, and overcoming sickness. Going into nursing homes. There's a lot of things that, that happen. And we as the body of Christ should rally around those that are hurting, around those that are suffering. And also, we can't forget the better part is when they have victory, he says, when they are honored, when something great happens, that's something I like about the new Facebook page. We get to see those pictures of y'all's grandkids every once in a while, and it's wonderful. You know, they, they're celebrating whatever is going on, and, and uh, thankfully many of us are friends on Facebook, and we get to see all the other stuff too. But we get to celebrate with you. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. We're there when the good times are good and when the bad times are bad. We as the body of Christ don't prefer one above another, but we should be equal in God's sight. Amen? Amen. And that last line says, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are looking forward to this season. And I know many people are on their way down and some will come down in January. But as the body of Christ... I'm already excited to hear what you all will be doing in the park. You're an example. You're an example. And what, what you were an example of is, is up to you. And when one example isn't so great, then we have a responsibility as the other parts of the body to help lift them up. Let's, let's get back to the dartboard. And keep aiming for that center, right? Let's let's not lose sight. Let's not get get off. If somebody gets off the board, it's our responsibility to help them face in the wrong direction. It, and you know, it's not like putting the tail on the donkey, where God blindfolds you and spins you around a hundred times, and you try to do something. No, our eyes are wide open. We we read earlier it says be be sober minded, be clear thinking. So you can see clearly and know what the Lord has for you. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this honor and opportunity today to share your word, to share your love, to share your, your hope for each and every one of us and our desire to one day, sooner than later, to be with you. And we thank you, Father God, for that heavenly home 
you have set aside for us. We thank you, Father God, for your blood that was spilled on our behalf that we may know you, we may love you, we may seek after you, and most importantly, share you with everyone we come in contact with. Let us be so full of you and your spirit that everyone, as it says in Matthew 6, see our good works and what we do for you and give you glory and praise. We thank you, Father God. You are the high and holy one. You are worthy to be praised. And I thank you, Father God, for today. Thank you for the, the opportunity that we're given here. And pray that that opportunity continues, not just in this park, but in all through all parks throughout the valley, that they would desire for someone to come in and have church with them and to fill that void continually. And ever so much more as we see the day approaching, Lord, help us to fellowship one with another and love you as you deserve to be loved. And we ask this in the name of our precious Heavenly Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. So keep an eye on the Facebook page for the Bible study times. We're excited for Bible studies, really excited. And uh, any, anything else that's coming down the pike, I don't know. What else we got going on? Next Saturday is the CRM conference. But remind everybody about the tree. I'm trying to read their sign language in the back. Yeah. Wrap it up, lock it down, lay in the plane. <laughs> but don't forget about the tree. Don't forget about the tree. If, if you can, if you're able, if you're not, praise God. Pray for somebody on that tree. Pick a name out and pray for them, okay? All right. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you.